Good morning and welcome back to the 43rd Ryder Cup here at Whistling Straits. We are joined by Mr. Sergio Garcia. Sergio, welcome. Thank you. Uh, 10th Career Ryder Cup. You've hit double digits, my friend. <laughs> um, but the other number I want to ask you about is 25 and a half. All-time leader in this wonderful event in points. I mean, that's a, just an incredible thing. Are, are you How aware are you of that? And just... Um, it blows me away. Does, how does it impact you? And do you take that to the first tee with you Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Mm, no, not really. I don't think that means anything once you step up there. Um, I think, uh, to be totally honest, I I really wasn't aware until Sunday uh, three years ago in, in Paris uh, because it's never been a goal of mine. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm very proud of it, and, uh, and it's something that, uh, you know, that obviously I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have – you know, at least, uh, you know, the rest of my life, uh, personally. But, um, but uh, once, once you step on that first tee, it's, it's not about you. You know, it's about the team, and, and, and I've always said it. You know, I'd rather go 0-5 and, and win the Ryder Cup than 5-0 and, and, and lose it. Uh, and that, that's not going to change. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the most important thing is, uh, is that Europe plays well, uh, that we uh, we give ourselves our best a best chance to uh, to win the cup, and um, and that's that's the goal. All right, let's hit the floor for some questions. We'll start with Damon this time in seven, then we'll come to Mark. Sergio, when we first saw you in '99, you were running around the golf course like Usain Bolt. When did the <laughs> Ryder Cup get in your blood? Um, in '95. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I remember I was at the Junior Ryder Cup, and uh, we went uh, to watch uh, the practice round at Oak Hill in Rochester. And I remember um, Sebi um, grabbed me under the ropes, and, and I think I walked. I think it was the 12th hole, uh, a little bit of the 12th hole, and uh, you know we were talking a little bit, and he was explaining things to me. Uh, so that was that was obviously amazing. Uh, took a picture and stuff, and and then I remember walked into the international pavilion and and saw some of the European crowds just singing and 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 the energy the energy that I, that I felt. I remember as a 15 year old, I was there and was like, I have to be a part of this at some point in my in my life. And uh, obviously, it came out. It came. A lot earlier than I than I thought in in '99, but uh, you know from that from that moment on I, I loved it, and and then obviously '99 was amazing uh, with with Jasper, and uh, even though we lost it, uh, you know the way you know the way the whole week went, it was uh, it just it just felt uh, unbelievable. All right, Mark on number four. <clears throat> hey Sergio, um, just what what in your mind is is has been the secret to your success in this competition and as a follower to that, is there a common denominator for, for guys like Poltz and Lee, you know, the, the veterans on this group, who, all of whom have had a lot of success here? Um, I don't know. Uh, I've obviously had amazing partners. Um, so um, I've obviously done some good things myself. But, uh, but I've just, uh, you know, I've just been able to gel nicely with, uh, with all the partners that I've uh, that I've had, and uh, we've we've had an amazing time. Uh, I've been very very thankful for that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, like I was saying, you know, the main the main goal is is the team and 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 where the team wants to to head to head to, and uh, and that's that's what we always try. So you kind of put yourself aside uh, for this for this week, and uh, and just uh, enjoy it with uh, with the rest of your teammates and and everyone around. <laughs> Unrelated follow uh, with what the video that Patty showed you guys with everybody having a number and whatnot. I'm just kind of curious how powerful that is to you, you know, to you guys. To having, you you know. It's it's uh, it was very powerful. I didn't know uh, I didn't know my number. I didn't know I knew that I've always known that that being a part of a Ryder Cup team uh, is very difficult, but I didn't know that uh, only. That little amount of of players have have made it, uh, so that shows you how how difficult it really is. So that's why every time I I am a part of a team or or the rest of our teammates, uh, that's why we we give it the um, uh, the respect that it deserves uh, because it's so difficult uh, to be a to be a part of it. So uh, it's uh, it's it's an honor, and uh, you know we we treat it like that. Going to go front right with Jeff. 
Sure, Joe. You mentioned, obviously, you've had different partners through the years with the Ryder Cups. I think you've partnered Lee maybe seven times. Uh, I don't know if that's right. You, know. uh, <laughs> how early <laughs> on do you know if something is going to work or not, and, and why would you two mesh so well? Um, no, I mean, it, it just, uh, I guess, chemistry, uh, how, how you feel. Um, I mean, we've had some some good matches that we've won and then we had some some ones that maybe we haven't played as well so um it just comes down to uh how you feel that that week and uh and, and more than anything just kind of being there for your partner uh enjoying enjoying your time with him and uh in the good and the bad and the ugly uh so um just uh just enjoy it it's it's you know as simple as that right here number 20 quick follow sergio what was your number 120. 120. Okay. And uh, do you does the does Team Europe does the Ryder Cup mean more to Team Europe than than Team USA? I I can't respond that. I I don't know how much it means to to the I know how much it means to us, but I don't know uh, how much it means to them. Uh, I know that to us it means a lot, and and just being a part of it, it it's it's amazing for us. Um, so, uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the only thing I can tell you uh, about it, I guess. And one more, if you don't mind. In 2018, uh, John Rahm defeated Tiger Woods. How, how big do you think that was in his progression to now being world number one? Um, I think it was important, for sure. Uh, and he, he'll probably tell you about it better. Uh, he, but, but I think he was headed that way anyway. You know, he's just he's just a great player. Uh, you know, he's got he's got all the shots, and and you know, it, it's it's just nice to see uh, as a Spaniard. It's just nice to see how he's evolved and how you know, obviously he's he's grown up and uh, and the way um, the way that his game is uh, is is gotten better and better. So it's um, it's nice to see, and uh, you know, you could you could see that he was he was kind of headed that way. Over on the right there, number five. So, uh, hey, Sergio, it's a little bit of an extension of, of Mark's question, but in terms of, uh, you know, regardless of how you're playing, you seem to show up at this event with just remarkable consistency. Uh, this is a, maybe a difficult thing to answer, but how do you take that energy or whatever your feeling is around this event and how much it means to you, how do you convert that into executing shots and making putts? Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean... To be totally honest, obviously I've I've had Ryder Cups where I come where I come into them playing really well and 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 I've done well and then there's Ryder Cups where I've come maybe not feeling quite as well and I seem to hit a switch when it, when I get here. So obviously the excitement that I get uh, when I come into into the Ryder Cups is uh, it's something that I can't describe it. I can't tell you why it happens, but it happens. Uh, it's just just love for it. Um, and uh, yeah, it just comes down to challenging yourself uh, every you know every match. Uh, it's um, you know it's it's fun uh, to me. The energy that you feel around the course, and and uh, not only with the crowds, but with your partners and with your teammates and and stuff like that. It's it's something very unique, and um, you know it, it seems to uh, to drive me uh, to to a to a high level, I guess. And that, that flipping of the switch that you're describing, like when does that happen? Is that is it a slow build through the week and then your first match? The kind of uh, switch goes or you no, start early? No, it probably starts as soon as you know you're in the team. Um, obviously, it, it grows as, as you get closer to to uh, crunch time and, and Friday morning or Friday afternoon, whenever you're going to play. But obviously, Friday morning when, when everything starts, uh, that's when it starts hitting uh, – you know the, the the highest point, but uh, but it just kind of builds up as soon as you know they're in the team. You know it's it's exciting and and you know I've been like last week uh, with uh, you know practicing and stuff. And you know every morning I will wake up and uh, I will turn to my wife Angela and I'll say, okay, you know we're getting closer. We're getting closer to going to the Ryder Cup. So uh, it's uh, it's always uh, it's always such a such a fun thing. Sergio, we're gonna beam out to Paolo. Paciani, Paolo, you are with Sergio. Go ahead, sir. Paolo, can you hear us? Do they? Okay. No. 
Thanks, Paul. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to Juan, who's going to ask some questions in your native language. All right. Bueno, Sergio, ayer hablábamos un poco con, con, con el capitán, con Patrick, de, de la importancia que tener la experiencia que tú tienes y la experiencia de Lee, por ejemplo, en el equipo. Sure. ¿no? Y, es, y al final, que has estado en nueve, has jugado nueve Ryder Cups, has estado en diez, siete victorias de Europa. Todo esto tiene importancia, ¿no? Y intimida un poco, ¿no? Sí, eh, obviamente yo creo que es, eh, todo, ese, es, todo ese tipo de cosas son importantes, eh, pero, pero bueno, luego eh, el viernes por la mañana el Tiel 1 eh, está muy bien, pero eso eh, empiezas de cero, ¿no? Entonces hay que darse cuenta de que eh, los americanos no te van a regalar un hoyo porque, oh, no, has ganado tantas Raid Cups o has jugado tantas. Ah, pues mira, este yo te lo damos, no, eso no, no funciona así, ¿no? Pero, pero bien, eh, siempre, es, siempre es bonito eh, tener eh, un, un buen historial en, en, eh, en un evento como este. Eh, y bueno, pues eh, lo importante es seguir, eh, seguir ayudando al equipo. Oye, hablando de la experiencia también, hablaba con, con Holland y con otros jugadores, ¿no? que ya mucho tiempo jugando en Estados Unidos, tienen como, la gente les apoya cuando van en PGA Tour y tal, y de repente llegan aquí y se encuentran con que esto no va a pasar. ¿no? Entonces, y además creo que somos muy poquitos españoles aquí esta semana, no sé si viene alguien contigo. Entonces, ¿cómo, cómo compensas eso? ¿Cómo, cómo haces? ¿no? no, bueno, eso eh, obviamente eh, lo hemos hablado eh, entre, entre nosotros y tal, pero... Sabes que es así, eh, no, no, hay, no hay más tu tía, es, es tan, tan sencillo como eso. Eh, lo bueno es que eh, esa energía de, del público eh, la puedes utilizar a tu favor también, aunque, aunque no sea hacia ti, eh, tú la puedes utilizar a, a tu favor y sabiendo que, eh, y es una de las cosas que, que, coment, que le comenta a, a algunos de los rookies, eh, si el campo está callado, es bueno. Eso es bueno para nosotros en Estados Unidos. Significa que estamos haciendo cosas buenas. Eh, no significa que no está pasando nada. O sea, normalmente, si no hay, si no hay, eh, si no hay aplausos o no hay mucha cosa, es que normalmente el, los europeos lo estamos haciendo bien y entonces está calladito. Eso, eso eh, es importante que ellos sepan que, que, que es bueno para nosotros, eh, para que no se crean que uf, no está pasando nada, qué pasa, tal. No, entonces, bueno, eh, todo ese tipo de cosas siempre es bueno que, que lo sepan eh, jugando aquí en Estados Unidos y, bueno, pues eh, hay que intentar eh, eh, apro aprovecharse de todos esos momentos. Y muchos han mencionado a Sebe esta semana, por supuesto, y hay una historia de la Ryder que además es Sebe y Chema juntos, ¿no? Y esa, ese papel como de hermano mayor que tenía Sebe con Chema, ¿tú crees que con John está empezando a pasar eso y, y puede ser alguna energía que funcione esta semana y en el futuro? Sí, eh, sin ninguna duda. Eh, obviamente eh, veremos a ver qué ocurre, eh, a ver si eh, jugamos o no juntos esta semana. Eh, sería bonito, pero, pero bueno, al final, al final de cuentas lo importante es lo que sea mejor para el equipo. Y, y si, bueno, eh, perdón, si, si el capitán y los vicecapitanes creen que, eh, que podemos ayudar al equipo mejor estando separados, pues eh, lo haremos de esa manera. Eh, si creen que, que podemos ayudar más eh, jugando juntos, pues eh, encantados y, y bueno, pues a disfrutar los, los dos juntos, ¿no? Eh, entonces veremos a ver, a ver qué ocurre. Bueno, y la última, hablando de lo de la experiencia, un poco, y te decía lo de hermano mayor, ¿no? ¿Tienes un poco esa sensación de que te, poca, te toca un poco, o tienes una labor un poco de hermano mayor con el equipo y un poco guiarles y calmarles y hacer sí, estas claro. cosas? ¿no? Sí, sin sí. ninguna duda, pero no solo yo, ¿no? Yo creo que, como bien has dicho tú, pues Ian... Eh, eh, Westwood, Rory, eh, Rory lleva unas cuantas también. Entonces, eh, es importante que, eh, que todos pongamos de nuestra parte, ¿no? Y todos pongamos nuestro, nuestro hombrito para que eh, si alguno lo necesita, pues venga y cualquier cosa que sea, ¿no? Comentario, eh, confianza, eh, un abrazo en el momento que, que toca. Entonces, hay que, hay que estar ahí para, para todo ese tipo de cosas. ¿Y cómo de a gusto estás en la raíz? Pues te veo encantado. Sí, bien. Obviamente, pues ya sabemos todos... Eh, lo que me motiva este, eh, este evento y, y bueno, pues eh, muy contento de, de poder ser parte de, de otro. Bien, gracias. Venga. Gracias. Good. Appreciate it. Have a good day. De nada. Gracias. Very well. Thank you.